Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with some more Pittsburgh Steelers tape breakdown and analysis. Want to talk about Najee Harris, obviously, statistically a really ugly performance against the Colts, 13 carries, 19 yards, so who's to blame? Is it on him? Is it the O-line? Is it something else? Let's talk about it. Before we start, if you guys could like this video, subscribe to the channel, and Check out the site, SteelersDepot.com, would really appreciate that. I want to go through the majority of his runs in this game and kind of dissect what we're seeing on tape. Harris says post game the lanes weren't there. Is that true? Let's find out. So first, carry of the game, first or second snap of the game is this under center play, and Justin Fields gets his leg stepped on by Zach Frazier, just the timing and the track of the way that Frazier is moving here on this zone run doesn't work out well, nearly creates a fumble. Fortunately, Pittsburgh holds on, but there really is no chance, obviously, for Harris to get going. Not much explanation needed here other than just to be frustrated by these repeated snap issues, whether it's unexpected snaps or bobbled snaps, or in this case, quarterback getting his foot stepped on. But hard to blame Najee here, obviously, just trying to protect the football, and by the time he corrals it, the play is dead. Next play in Pittsburgh running split zone with Arnold Washington coming across in motion. This is second and 10. He's going to take the end man on the line of scrimmage doing this at a two back and, you know, zone run. I don't know exactly what the pass and the steps are being coached here for Connor Hayward, but missing the linebacker up through and linebackers able to fill. Anytime linebackers are running free, they're going to make plays. Think back to the 49ers game last year. Uh, anytime Pittsburgh has really struggled to run the football, it's often just been because guys aren't getting hats at the second level and linebackers are running free and filling gaps. So it's really hard to blame Najee on this run. I don't really see much available and open to him here. I have no problem him bringing this run back based on the hats of the linemen. You, know, you could argue about him trying to go up through uh, the A gap here, but I think bringing this one back, Hayward makes his block. You got an issue with Scotty Miller over here as well. I get the vision and what Harris is trying to do on this run, but you got free linebackers making tackles. It's going to be tough for any running back out there to make anything uh, happen. So one last look at it. Again, hard to put this one on Najee. Another zone run for Najee Harris here. This time they're going to run the weak side to the boundary, to the right side, behind right guard Spencer Anderson and right tackle Broderick Jones trying to get this double, this combo with Anderson, the right guard climbing to the second level. He can't we'll talk about why here in just a moment, but again, you're getting some free defenders filling the lane and you know, really, again, no, no running room there for Najee Harris. So we'll look here, we'll watch the uh, the one tech, the D tackle, and what he does. It's one of those veteran tricks of the trade is he's going to hold Anderson and prevent him from climbing. And it's so hard to see in the scrum of it all that it very rarely gets called that you can get away with it. And that helps keep uh, the safety here free and make this tackle fill the alley. We're going to take a better look at the hold from the other end zone angle watch this de tackle right here hold anderson pull him down prevent him from climbing and that forces harris to try to cut this one back safety fills makes a tackle again you got a free player here different reason this time than the last one with hayward it is holding should they call it yes but these refs have there, there's no way you can see that and so it rarely does it get uh, called but it prevents anderson from getting to the second level you can see him look here he wants a call but he's not going to get it this is the third down play before the fourth down failure the Pittsburgh had with Justin Fields on the design quarterback run. And I'm just not seeing much of a push up front here from the offensive line. It is, you know, they're stalemating at best at the line, but the Colts are controlling the line of scrimmage. And I thought with Najee, I'll pull some daddy here at the end. There's a lot of inside zone, a lot of runs ahead. And I even thought going into this game, if you heard me talk about the Colts game, you know, last Friday, last Saturday, Duo and inside zone probably weren't going to be your best schemes in this one. The Colts can two gap and they got some big guys up front, even without the Forrest Buckner and the lanes weren't going to be there. I think he needed some more creativity uh, than this run game that felt pretty static overall. Harris to me still picked up the first down here. They should have challenged and they didn't. But again, you're just not really getting a push here from the offensive line. And so I don't know what Harris is really expected to do beyond that because it just really isn't a lane. Of course, it's third and two. You're just trying to pick up the first down. I think guys a little bit high here. McCormick a little bit tall here. He's not really controlling the line of scrimmage. Linebackers filling. There's just really nothing there for Najee Harris. 
Pittsburgh working at a pistol later in the game. Another man scheme duo. Going to get a full block here between the tight ends. Throwing a Washington. Fanning out to take the end. Frymuth inserting his way through. Folding through uh, between tight end left tackle to work to the second level. It's blocked up decently initially, but we're going to watch Dan Moore the left tackle. He's going to lose his man here. D-tackle spins off of him. I think it's Grover Stewart, the uh, the big run plugger they have, and that lane that was there just dissipates before Harris can get through it, and I really don't blame that on him. I don't think if a running back, I don't know if Patterson, even though I think he's a burstier back, is going to really be able to hit that hole in time. Moore just has to be able to control this block. The tackle works off of it and you know fills that lane that would have been, if that lane is there, I mean, you have a huge opportunity on this play. This one really could have been busted for a really good gain. And so we're going to see this motion, um, you know, maybe draw the linebacker away a little bit. You know, his eyes are wrong here on this play. And so there is a lane there. If Moore can just hold that block a little bit better and let Harris get through that hole, if Ryan with that linebacker went away. And so he's not even blocking anybody. So there was a real opportunity there. If Moore can just hold that block a little bit longer, you see the lane through. These guys are outside. They're containing Linebacker gets walled off. McCormick does a nice job here at the second level, but that D tackle coming off that block forces Harris back, and uh, that run that could have been a big hitter, you know, goes goes nowhere. So missed opportunities, one failed block, and ruin a play. Here, Pittsburgh is trying to run crack toss to the field. They're going to put Frymuth in motion as the fullback. They've not had Michael Pruitt to get a couple of those fullback reps, even though Connor Hayward has gotten most of them throughout the season. And it just not executed well. Going to get penetration here by the nickel corner off the edge. Jefferson unable to crack him down because that you know nickel's blitzing and able to really beat him to the punch. It throws Dan Moore off track. And Harris gets in front of Dan Moore. The timing of it all is off. You want your tackle leading out in front, obviously. Now you got Frymuth, not exactly the most skilled blocker. This one gets strung out horizontally. There really is no lane there. So the Colts penetration really blew this crack toss up. Not that Harris is the best back to be running this with. He obviously would probably prefer to have Jalen Warren in this game. I don't know if Patterson was hurt at this point or not. I'm just going through the film here. Um, but yeah, either way, this one is, is disrupted off the snap, and there really is no lane, no opportunity there for Najee Harris. And so another run goes nowhere. Pittsburgh's going to run a power scheme here. It's called Dart, the backside tackle. Broderick Jones is going to pull across here, and that hole just never really develops. I think two issues on this play. A, Mason McCormick, pad level a little high, a little tall, not really able to seal down this D-tackle and help open up this hole and widen this gap here. And so that's one issue. D-tackle does a nice job. You know, McCormick has his hip set and is has leverage, obviously, in front of the block. D-tackle's not going to make the play, but you're just not getting a lot of movement here to help kind of really widen this hole. Jones, a little tougher to squeeze behind. He ends up whiffing anyway, and this play ends up going uh, pretty much no, nowhere. We'll take a look at it from the other angle. I know tough block here. That's one of their big D tackles. Um, that's uh, Stewart, who's a, a load to handle in the middle, but you want to see McCormick be able to really drive down and create some movement here. Stewart's able to step and still control this block and help squeeze this hole a little bit, and then Jones trying to follow through on the linebacker, EJ Speed. He can't make the play. Linebackers scrape over the backside. Not a great job here uh, walling things off. And so just really not able to time this one up and hit that hole with authority as it's squeezing on this play. And uh, this one, again, going nowhere. So design of the play, I think, you know, obviously Harris, good vision. It's power scheme, following behind your puller. But it's just not really there for him, and it's hard to blame him for that. I want to start this next clip from the aerial view, and there were at least two occasions in this game where the Colts did a nice job kind of disguising, you know, who was going to be fit in the run, and especially this number 45, EJ Speed, he's walked out here on this twin receiver set initially, but then he's going to end up blitzing down here and timing this well. He's unaccounted for, and that's going to help throw this run off track, a zone run where Harris immediately has some pressure in the backfield, has to try to cut, and he gets tackled in this run really goes nowhere. So we're going to see 45 walk out and then appear back in screen to come down and disrupt this one uh, basically immediately and make that tackle from behind for essentially no gain. So this one, I think you could argue a little bit that a more explosive back might be able to you know plant off his outside foot and get away from the linebacker on this one. I have seen Najee 
you know, show a little bit more shiftiness in other games, certainly not this Colts game. You know, you could argue that a, you know, quicker back might be able to escape this one. So, you know, maybe you could t- convince yourself and kind of make the argument about Harris being able to get more. If he does, there certainly is a hole him uh, for a hole for him to, to hit on this play. Um, I think also some maybe miscommunication. I see Broderick Jones here after the play uh, talking to Zach Frazier. I don't know for not identifying the linebacker. Uh, if that was an issue, it's hard to really say exactly what the issue is. We're seeing Anderson and, and Jones double here. So there's some definitely some issues here on, on the front side uh, of this run here on the split zone run with uh, Van Jefferson coming across. So I got Anderson and, and Jones working to the same guy. I got speed coming in for East time, didn't disguised it well, and it's still tough for Harris to really get going. So I think, you know, that probably is more the issue than it would be Harris just lacking the burst to, to get away on this play. Before I show the next Najee Harris run, I want to show one of the good ones from Cordell Patterson. One of the first plays as Pittsburgh was backed up near their own end zone, the drive that ended in the pick and fumble this is called crunch i did a video on this last year they actually really ran it a bunch against uh the colts and some of these four three teams they're going to run crunch and these are these double wham block and kind of ear holing d tackles it's a really quick hitting type of play generally what you'll see at least in pittsburgh and really around the league is on crunch the tight end will come down and wham and ear hole the three tech pittsburgh does vary it there's a variation of crunch here where the tight end does not do that. It's going to be, in this case, the right tackle and the right guard. The right tackle is going to block down, and the right guard is going to block down as well in this kind of backside one tech on this play. And we're going to see the center climb out. We're going to see left tackle climb out. Just a lot of working angles here, and it's really well done. It's really well executed, and I think the influence of Anderson coming down in this action initially, like he's going to pull, influence the linebacker. He's kind of getting a pull key from Anderson thinking, okay, they're going to run power, here to the left side, I'm going to try to beat him to the punch and fill this hole, but they're running away, they're running to the right, good down block from Broderick Jones, Anderson does enough here, it's a tough block to make, I think he's fine here, you're getting you know, Washington to take care of the edge here, you're getting Frazier able to immediately climb to the second level, good block by Jefferson to set his hips, I mean you have this insane hole for Patterson to run through, he hits it, it's a nice job here, Falls forward a bit. It's a good run overall, but it is really well blocked. This is crunch. These two double or these two uh, wham blocks, I should say. And that hole is there for Patterson for a really good run. I show that play to show this one from Najee Harris. They went back and ran crunch with Harris a little bit later in the game, and it was blocked really abysmally. It was really poorly done. There was no hole for Harris the way that Patterson got his and to me that kind of really sums up some of the holes that were there for Patterson that just simply were not for Najee Harris so same concept overall they're going to run it to the other side this time we're going to get down blocks and these wham blocks from Dan Moore the left tackle from Mason McCormick the left guard Frazier's going to work to the second level we got Washington here uh, you know base blocking the defensive end and what you know the down blocks and the wham blocks are fine but Washington loses his block 44 comes under Frazier in this case to fill. We're not able to take care of the DB. Jefferson was really out leveraged on this play. Sometimes you can run this one to the outside and off the outside hip of the receiver if that hole is there, but Harris has to stay, stay inside and that hole never opens up. We saw you know, a truck size hole for Patterson. There is no lane here for Najee Harris. And so Washington has to be able to control that block if he does. If Frazier can, you know, get hands and stick to the linebacker, who does a nice job on this play uh, to work under it, takes a bit of a risk, but it works out for him, and that, you know, is totally balled up. So you ran crunch again, and I imagine the Colts were a bit more prepared for it the second time than the first time it it hit you, and so that's an element as well. Um, but I think this one really sums up when we talked about the run with uh, Patterson. We had a huge hole with Harris. There was just nothing there, and so I think that kind of lends credibility to the idea the hole is just simply were not there. It was there initially, but you know, if Washington can can make that block, then maybe. But this thing closes up really quickly. I don't think if you had a faster back, he's going to be able to run through all of that in time. And uh, this one goes nowhere. Last example: Pittsburgh running traditional power with the backside guard Spencer Anderson pulling right to left, and Jefferson going to insert his way through as well. And again, that hole just never really opening up well for. 
Najee Harris and just not really getting enough movement up front here on this double team and then through the lane. Um, just, you know, he tries to squeeze through, but that hole really it closes up pretty quickly. So, again, it's it's hard to really talk about what Najee could have had. There just simply, to me, was not a lot there. Uh, the safety does a nice job to come down, fill, and squeeze, and this hole uh, never really opens up on this play. So just a continued theme in this one of these holes that, that aren't that were supposed to be there by design, obviously, just not opening up and not creating the movement. And the Colts doing a great job to win the point of attack. Even the DN here in Washington getting some movement to, to knock him back just to help control the line of scrimmage. And so another run that just really never got started for Harris. So overall, my takeaway is that there really truly was limited running room for Harris in this game. Now, why did Patterson have more success? I did want to put on screen. I went through and charted each of the um, runs that were called for Harris and then called for Patterson before his ankle injury. For Harris, I charted six runs of inside zone or split zone, three runs of duo, one crack toss, one gap that was Anderson pulling a dart scheme in crunch. Um, so we're, again, we're getting a pretty heavy concentration on inside zone duo, stuff more up the middle. For Patterson, I have down three duo, one inside zone, one crunch, and then one kind of short trap with the right guard uh, quickly pulling on a short pull and hitting the, uh, the the three tech on the backside. So, you know, overall, I mean, it was some duo for Patterson. The run concepts weren't radically different. It felt like a little bit less emphasis on duo and inside zone with Patterson. A couple of trap blocks in there from a percentage standpoint, more for Patterson than for Harris. Um, I thought it was a little over-reliant Pittsburgh had on some of the inside zone duos in this game, which I didn't think was going to be all that successful and largely to me were not. But yeah, takeaways is that I just didn't see the holes there for, for Harris and we could argue about a you know a better back. And obviously if you had a real elite guy in there, can he create a little bit more, hit the hole a bit harder? Sure, there's no question about that. And Harris no doubt has his limitations and you're never going to really expect the big plays out of him. He's kind of a, he's an old school runner that's going to, try to power his way forward, and with an offensive line not getting a great push, uh, he's not really able to kind of get a runway and get himself going. So there are certainly some critiques to still have overall. But I do watch the tape, and I sit there and say, you know, show me which run, where it was there, where he missed the hole, or, you know, was taken down by a tackle, and he should have been able to run through it. And if he just makes his DB miss, then he's going to bust off a big run. I didn't show every single carry, but I showed the bulk of them, and I, I just didn't see it on tape. So... You know, we'll see what happens against the Cowboys. It's a unit that has struggled to stop the run overall throughout the first month, and so it'll be a big test there. Pittsburgh should get uh, left guard Isaac Say Malu back, which will be important, and hopefully create some more movement up front and improve this run blocking uh, nature of this team. But yeah, in this one, the stats are ugly. Obviously, 13 carries, 19 yards, super, super poor numbers. I just didn't see anything there for Harris to, to run with. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Appreciate you guys watching. Please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. And of course, check out the site, SteelersDepot.com. Thank you again, and we'll talk to you soon.